So, total enthalpy wheels, energy recovery wheels, heat recovery wheels, what do they do? Why do we need them? Okay, so the purpose of an energy recovery wheel is terms of in an HVAC system is to transfer energy, latent and sensible most of the time, from one airstream to another. There are different types of wheels. Some just transfer sensible only. Where we are located in the southeast, almost exclusively we use total enthalpy wheels, which again transfer latent and sensible heat from one airstream to another. There are two primary wheel types of construction. One is a polymer-based wheel, and then one is an aluminum wheel. They're engineering trade-offs to both of these technologies in terms of pressure drop, efficiency, first cost, size and weight, etc. So please look into both of those when you're trying to make your decision of what type of construction to use for your energy recovery wheel. So heat wheels basically use a desiccant technology which is very similar to if you've seen the little pack of silica gel that come in your sneakers. So it adsorbs moisture and it also takes that and it transfers heat as well from one very hot humid airstream to a relatively cool and dry airstream. Now if you see behind me I have a diagram of a very basic energy recovery wheel which would be applied in this case in a makeup air unit situation, 100% outdoor air unit, DOAS, dedicated outdoor air system, all names for the kind of the same thing, which is a system that's bringing in 100% outside air. Now you can see from the top airstream, this would be your this would be your OA airstream, in this case 100% outdoor air. The bottom would represent your exhaust airstream, so coming from your building and going out the wheel here. Now what happens is this wheel spins this way or this way, I'm not really sure, I think it, I think it spins clockwise, and it takes, it absor adsorbs moisture and picks up heat from the relatively humid and hot outer airstream. There's a divider here in the unit which you can't see on this drawing, so they would be separate airstreams. It takes that humid humidity and that heat and transfers it to the relatively cool and relatively dry exhaust airstream. So you can look at some numbers here and the way I've written this is basically dry bulb, wet bulb, dry bulb, wet bulb, etc, etc. So um, this one I got RH because it's coming back from the building. So we'll talk about that in a second. So you can see 95 dry, 78 wet, which is a very hot and humid day, design day in most places are close to that in the southeast, going through the wheel okay, and leaving the wheel at roughly 80-67. So you can see it's removed some humidity and some sensible heat. So if you go from, well let's look at the sensible heat first. So 95 down to 80, so 15 degrees of sensible heat. That's going to go to your cooling device, your DX coil or your, your chill water coil. And then you've got your exhaust air coming back here, 75, 50%-ish, something like that. And then it's picking up some heat and leaving at 89, 74. It's picking up some humidity as well. So if we just look at the sensible component, 95 to 80, 75 to 89, okay? Now, the big payback you get is with the humidity transfer, okay? So it takes a lot of energy to remove humidity from the air. So if we can knock some of that down before it goes to your cooling coil, that's, that's a good thing. So, okay, so to illustrate the humidity, I, I'm using grains, and these are the numbers you're gonna see here in the circles. And if you're not familiar with the grain, so on the, in psychometrics we talk about grains per pound of dry air. The grains are the physical, actual moisture in the air. So if you took a pound of air and wrung it out, whatever came out of there as far as moisture, that would be the grains of moisture in the air, the amount of humidity in there. So the higher the grains, the more humid, the lower the grains, the less humid. You get the picture, right? So 118 grains would be a very grainy, very hot and humid day. So we're going from 118 down to 80 grains. So it's quite a significant reduction in humidity. And you can see on the bottom here, the exhaust air is going from 65 grains to 99 grains. Okay, so we looked at the sensible 95 to 80, 75 to 89. Now the humidity, 118 down to 80, 65 to 99. So that's the basic function of an energy recovery wheel. So heat recovery wheels are great at doing just that, recovering heat, recovering moisture, transferring heat and moisture from one airstream to another, okay? Here's a common misconception that we hear all the time. People think that if you have an energy recovery wheel on your package rooftop or your split system, 
that you are safe and you're dehumidifying the space with that energy cover wheel. That's actually not true, so be careful with that. You are removing moisture so that when it goes to the cooling coil, the cooling coil has to do less work. But this 80 grains on a design day will not dehumidify your space if you're trying to keep it at 65 grains. Okay, so it's real simple. So one of the areas you might get in trouble with this, if it's a cool rainy day and your cooling coil is not running a lot, you're not going to be dehumidifying this air. And you can get a very grainy day and still be at part load as well. All right, I hope that helps explain a little bit about energy recovery devices. Any more questions, throw them in the comments. We'll be glad to answer it. Hey, thanks for watching. We appreciate you.